One of the things that has always bothered me about FPS games is how the weapon sandboxes are often violently overcorrected whenever change is needed. To me, it just seems like when it comes time to reevaluate how a weapon works, many devs take the path of dishing out unbelievable nerfs or just removing items altogether, rather than actually fixing them. And it's for these reasons that today's video is actually really special to me, because when designing Halo Infinite, 343 took a good long look at one of their very own designs, the Scattershot, and set out to do one key thing. They set out to evolve it. I'm the Home Slice, Ascend Period. And in today's video, I want to talk about why the Heat Wave, one of the new weapons in Halo Infinite, is a prime example of how you evolve and manipulate your designs, rather than kill or mutate them. I'll explain how and why 343 chose the Scatter Shot as the Promethean weapon to evolve, and we'll break down why the Heat Wave functions as it does. Like always, be sure to like and subscribe, and stick around for my viewer question at the end. Let's get this started. I think to best understand why the evolution of the scatter shot into the heat wave is so important, we need to understand what exactly drove the scatter shot to evolution, rather than death. Now, since 2012, the Scattershot has been met with fierce opposition from what I call sandbox purists, who believe that Halo is not allowed to have weapons with overlapping functions. To say I don't fully understand these people would be true, because apparently having two differently functioning sniper rifles in your game is fun, but not two differently functioning shotguns. Wait, wait, let's reel that back. Function. Pocket that word, we'll need that later. Anyway, the scattershot struggle to really defy the ops here was only made more difficult by the stereotype that it was actually just a weaker shotgun anyway, which in some capacity is true. It does, in a sense, deal less immediate damage than the shotgun. It's right around here where the average player will stop asking questions and just agree with whatever the guy in his late 20s to mid 30s has said on the YouTube video and come to the conclusion that Scattershot is LOL bad kid 343 please remove. But we're going to reach into our pockets and pull out that word we saved earlier. Function. The Scattershot comes equipped with projectiles that bounce off hard surfaces. That, on paper, would allow the user to deliver damage to opponents without direct lines of sight. And in Halo 5, the bouncing projectile mechanic was actually upgraded to allow these shots to travel further and even slightly track enemies once the projectile had bounced at least once. So while it is in many ways a shotgun in the basic sense, it's also far more unique and complex than a regular shotgun. So when it hit the chopping block at 343 for Halo Infinite, I think the designers asked one key question. If it isn't a good shotgun, then what is it good for? The answer wasn't in how much damage it does. It was about how it does that damage. While it very well may be a duplicate shotgun to some, it is in many rights the only weapon that features bouncing rounds as a mainstay, not an offshoot. So 343 sort of said, forget the shotgun idea, let's just make a gun that's all about bouncing rounds. This seems pretty simple, but I think it's a totally freeing mindset to apply to the scatter shot, because now it's no longer about making a gun conform to a set of expectations, now it's about making the gun as self-described as possible, and that is how you get results. So let's talk about the Heat Wave. Taking after its Halo 4 Promethean predecessors, the Heat Wave is one of the rare weapons in Halo that has alternate firing modes. A vertical fire mode that calls back to its roots as the shotgun, and a horizontal mode that acts as a crowd control service. Regardless of selected mode, the Heat Wave projectiles have notably longer travel distances and post-bounce lifespans than that of the scatter shot, and even the projectiles themselves seem a little fatter. But what I've really come to love about the Heat Wave is that only a few days into its lifespan, it's already greatly misunderstood. Many players, myself included at first, associated the vertical fire mode with how the scatter shot worked and made the assumption that this gun was, yet again, a shotgun type weapon, with merely a firing quirk. But I'm going to assert this is actually not true. 
I'm going to assert the heat wave is less about getting kills outright and more about the generation of an array of battle changing damage, all while creating rapid and varied areas of denial. What I'm implying is that the heat wave might actually be a little closer to what we'd call a utility weapon than it is a traditional power weapon. Why? Well, we have to revisit why the gun was redesigned in the first place. It's not about how much damage you do, it's about how you do it. The heat wave may not deal shotgun levels of damage, but it does deal notable amounts of damage quickly and potentially over a wide area. This is a trait typically reserved for explosive weapons and items. This wide swath damage is useful for breaking up groups, peppering team shotters, and even for scaring campers out of their hidey holes. But what makes it even more interesting is that being on the sending end of the heat wave and being on the receiving end are two entirely different mental games. Because if you're smart, the sender can coordinate their rebounds to create certain patterns and paint certain areas. It's a game of strategy for the sender where in reality you don't even have to really be aiming directly at your opponents. But for the receiver, it's a desperate attempt to avoid as much damage as possible, and how you receive that damage is liable to change at any second. Whether it be because you don't know which projectile pattern is next, or because you have no idea what the ricochet pattern will be, the heat wave is a challenging weapon to approach. In fact, I often found myself hesitant to challenge a heat wave, despite knowing I could probably out damage the user. I was hesitant because I had no good way to predict how those light beams were going to get thrown at me, and I certainly had no clue how many were going to be bouncing back and hit me anyway even if I did dodge them. And it's this mentality that has me in love with the heat wave. When it's in play, the focus is not just on the damage, the focus is on the function, the interaction, the play by play. This is a hard circumstance to create, and is one that could have totally been cut out of the franchise entirely if 343 would have been more focused on how much damage the scattershot was doing instead of them focusing on how it was doing that damage. The heat wave is a superb example of how you not only honor and preserve your design, but how you evolve and improve it as well. 343 made use of a fairly unique feature they developed and avoiding caving in to the pressure from players to simply remove anything they don't like or understand. I hope the game continues to show us more examples of evolution in design, rather than abandonment, because in Halo's 20 year history, there's a lot to evolve. But this brings us to today's question. Do you think the emphasis on function was the better evolution path for the scatter shot, or should 343 have focused on evolving it into a better shotgun? Leave your comments below. Like the video if you liked it, and subscribe if you haven't. Follow me on Twitter, and let's talk in my Discord. Until next time, I'll catch y'all later.